The return of them. The returns. <laughs> Good one, Beard. Great start to the video. But yes, it has been some time since we've gone loony. And sadly, though, we'll have to wait a little longer as the new content rests on the high seas and not the celestial stretch of land. We have new mobs, both big and bad, and small and wild. There are new locations to discover and resources to plunder. And of course, anticipate some fancy new crafts to go along with all that. It's a small update that does pack a good deal, so let's get to it. First up, the newly generated salt formations. No longer will we find but rocky pillars reaching up from the depths as clusters of salty goodness now find themselves dotting the map. As always, these are quite random, I'm sure, in size and location, but are easily distinguishable via a pseudo glow while looking at the map. Some are easily accessible, while others sit among dangerous rocks. But let's head out the one, shall we? Slowly drift toward these ominous formations to perhaps make a grim discovery. These look a lot like people in distress, don't they? Perhaps the moon's fury turned them, or maybe something dark lurks below. But regardless, these are where we'll find some new- Holy hell, what the heck are those things? Relax, and I'll tell ya, you numpty. Say hello to the cookie cutters everyone. New pseudo-hostile mobs that more or less don't appreciate us sailing on by. They'll leap onto our boat and attach themselves, most likely looking to sink us. They may only have a hundred health and are quite easily killable, but their 20 damage each hit ain't nothing, so I would watch yourself. But let the cutters cut too long, and soon you'll have even bigger problems on your hand. After maybe 8 to 10 seconds, the cutters die off, but your boat will spring a leak for each successful cutter, mind you. So make sure to get these things off your vessel very fast. Each of these little guys drop a piece of monster meat, as well as one, maybe two, pieces of a new resource, cookie cutter shells. Unfortunately, I'm not too sure yet whether cutters respawn. But we can use their loot for now for another new thing, the cookie cutter cap. It's a head armor that sits at 525 durability, which is the same as a battle helm or a shelmet, only the cap has the mere 70% damage absorption rate, making it one of the weakest helmets in all of Don't Starve Together. So I guess the draw is supposed to be the 35% wetness resistance, which I'll give it credit, it's actually the best for all armor sets across the entire Don't Starve universe, but I also figured that it would perhaps damage attackers, or at the very least, maybe protect against additional cookie cutter attacks, but that also doesn't appear to be the case, sadly. I guess all we got was a fashion statement, everyone. But back to these salt formations. Get close enough to mine them and walk away with three to five pieces of salt rocks, depending, of course, on the size of the formation. But once again, I cannot confirm the renewability of these at this time, but I can showcase yet another Warly exclusive, the Salt Crystal Spice. Using three rocks per craft, you can then toss some into your seasoning station along with a food to kind of just whip up any salty version of anything. At first glance, it appears as if nothing's kind of changed. But keen eyes may notice that this pierogi is granting 50 health this time and not the usual 40. Yes, folks. As if Warley needed to be any better, you can now increase the healing properties of nearly every food item in the game by 25% using salt. Even foods that heal very little. It's not game-changing because it has to be crockpot stuff. And I actually would have liked to see salty foods maybe have a bit more increased Spoilage time, but hey, that still actually is a thing with these new recipes, so that is a nice touch. However, likely the better use for the stuff, the new food craft, the salt box. Using the hefty 10 pieces of salt rocks though, a blue gem, and a cut stone, you have access to a structure that may not allow the storing of prepared 
prepared crockpot dishes, which I might add should be up for debate. However, no, this also includes jerky and honey, which kind of sucks, but it rather serves to store quote unquote normal foods and ingredients within it, only to have them last 400% longer than that of the normal rate. It might not seem like it, and your mods might tell you otherwise, but trust me, it does just that. Just look at the levels of the green of the items in the icebox of that of the salt box. It's very neat, actually. For our next set of new content drops, we must head out to sea uh, once again and search for shoals and some new deep ocean fish. As far as I can tell, we are still incapable of fishing or netting these fishy friends as of yet, but I'd imagine that will be altered very soon. Furthermore, I don't think these shoals are actually always around upon generating the world either, but correct me there if I'm wrong. Personally, I found no trace of them until spring, and they too then began showing up on the map. I'm assuming they're random, considering that yes, they may be seasonal at the moment, and their icons are bloody freaking hard to distinguish at times too, which doesn't help. But we have to venture these in search of our last beast. Roll up to a shoal and have a chance at spawning one big bad blue bird. Say hello to the Melbatross, everyone. Don't starve together's newest boss buddy. The Melbatross seems to remain non-hostile until you yourself initiate combat, but hopefully that changes as you'll soon discover how potentially annoying it is to chase this giant rat with wings down. Expect a specific guide on it once I know more concrete information about it, but for now, it's good to know that its attacks not only harm you and the boat separately, but also that many of them will actually push the boat away, which proves even more freaking annoying. The beast sits at only 5,000 health, which is absolutely nothing, but can pack a punch, although note that I was wearing a 70% damage absorption armor piece at the time. It appears to only have two, maybe three attacks, and two of which don't really hurt you or the boat at all. But again, the biggest issue is the fact that it doesn't stay aggroed. Be it a bug or whatever, the Melbatross just kind of ups and flies away like nothing's happening after a time, and then it will just roam the skies, making you have to chase it. I tracked it down four separate times, only to get a hit or two in, and then it would just naff off again. So as you can see, I decided to do my best one-man punch impersonation and kill it dead. But let's gather the loot. Expect a crap ton of feathers during and after the fight, a couple blue gems, some meat, its beak, and two special blueprints. Let's discuss. The Melbatron's beak is an ore with 100 uses, and of course the potential to be weld and deal 27.2 damage a swing. I believe it's literally just a glorified boat ore for the time being, as all it has over a normal one seems to be its durability. But tell me if again I'm missing anything. All them feathers you got really will find use, as in order to even get to a particular craft that requires them, you must refine a great deal of them into feathery canvas. The silk is very easy, but six Melbatross feathers for a single piece of canvas is asking a lot considering what we're even building towards. And what we're building towards would be the Winged Sail, accessible solely through one of the blueprints drop from the Blue Bird Boss using driftwood, rope, and four pieces of canvas, so yes, that's a lot of feathers, you'll have access to a sail that is likely supposed to be better than a normal one, but to be honest, I can't really tell. Be that due to me still not being overly fond of the sailing mechanics in Don't Starve Together, or I simply haven't sailed enough to truly notice. However, I will say that it kinda seems slightly more responsive while using this one, but I don't know. Hey, at least it looks cool, right? At the end of the day, folks, this is beta branch content, and that's everything I could find, meaning it is all subject to change, and things are not likely working as planned. So please, take everything with a grain of salt as I have. I love having new additions, and expect big things to come from this, but I truly do hope that Clay pushes more lunar content over Turn of Tide stuff, because I genuinely still
still dislike these water mechanics. But that being said, folks, thanks for watching. Well wishes to ya. Feel free to discuss anything with me down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.